you spoke earlier about forgiveness as removing the barrier. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking a lot about how I, you know, spent a lot of my teenage years in therapy told that I didn't, you know, I didn't have healthy boundaries and having to establish boundaries of you know, acceptable within the boundary unacceptable outside. And I'm just the more I get into the course, the more I'm I'm wanting to dissolve the idea of boundaries. And and I would just love to kind of get your input on that a little bit. Yeah, good. Yeah. The ego made up the cosmos and it made up all the limits, uh, limits of communication, um, limits with everything, limits around food and sexuality, you know, the world is a world of limits. It's a world of lack, it's a world of scarcity, because the belief in lack is what the ego is. It's the belief that that you aren't already whole and complete and perfect. So the ego system is a belief in lack. So, so when the cosmos was made up, when the mind seemed to separate from God and believe this idea, it was a very, very chaotic experience. Now, the mind in its natural state, you know, when you're an idea in the mind of God, when you live in the mind of God, it's just bliss. And so, to believe that you could fall from grace or leave that mind of God was going from bliss into chaos. And so, there was a device that was invented by the ego to help minimize the chaos. And that device is judgment. It would be like, in this world, if you were like a school teacher and you were working, let's say, with a, a group of kindergartners or preschool, age will say, and you went out to do something in the yard, and while you were gone, in the preschool, they decided, the kids just decided to just go wild. They decided to have a food fight, take off all their clothes, <laughs> throw the food at each other, uh, knock over all the furniture, and just, just go completely wild. And then if the teacher comes back into the room and goes, Stop! Everybody stop right where you are, you know, and then immediately says, okay, all the boys get over there, all the girls get over there, get your clothes back on, drop the food, you know, ba 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 the rules. Here comes the, the teacher, you know, to bring order into the chaos, starts in with all the, the, the judgments, the evaluation, the control. So basically, judgment was invented to minimize the chaos through control. And that's why when you watch the Matrix movie, you know, it's a world based on control. The whole Matrix is based on control. And even if we look at it in terms of, of what seems to be deviant behavior on Earth, when we have what they call criminals, uh, those are the ones that get locked up. And then we have the prisons have all these, you know, the gatekeepers, the the ones, the wardens, and there's a whole system of control. And yet, it, it goes to family systems. Mom and dad usually, <laughs> in most cases, have the control over the family system. It's my way or the highway. You follow my rules. When you live in this house, you follow my rules. Then we go to school. School has rules. Then we go to society and to work. The workplace has rules. Then we get involved in a relationship. There's rules there. And there's, there's boundaries in that system of, of, of relationship, or in that, just like there was in the family system. This is okay, this is okay, oh, this is a no-go. <laughs> this is a no-go. Rules, rules, rules. You know, it's, it's underneath the rules is this idea that if there were no rules, all would be chaos. And, of course, that's why the ego invented the rules. And the ego said, oh, all is chaos, but I can help you out. I can invent rules and boundaries to keep you from feeling the chaos. So it's fear, it's fear, chaos. Yeah, it's fear of chaos is where the, the rules come in. Now, the Holy Spirit comes in, the divine intervention we were talking about, and starts whispering another thought. Uh, if you would let go of all of the rules, if you would let go of all of the boundaries, all would be love. 
hmm, that's, a, that's an opposite thought to the ego. You know, it's like the, the ego says, don't go back into your mind because it's dark down there. And if you go far enough down in your mind to the very bottom of it, and you go all the way to that core belief, God is waiting behind that, that first belief, that core belief, and God is going to get you. God is going to destroy you. And the Holy Spirit is saying, if you go down through this belief system all the way to that core belief, and you go peel that off, you lift that cornerstone, God is pure love. It's like the prodigal son story uh, from the Bible, where Jesus was saying, no, the father in that will not be angry, will not punish the prodigal son, will actually throw a celebration for the prodigal son, will we'll say, I'm so happy that you are back, and there will be this big celebration instead of this vicious slaughter. So you can see that that's why there's a fear to go within, that the mind that has believed in the ego is, is afraid of stillness. And even with meditation experiences, you know, there can be a terror that comes when you start to become, feel disoriented, like you're losing your grounding. You know, it's almost like, uh oh, where is this heading? Am I going to just, you know, float away or disappear? Now, specifically, when you come down to things like, like working here in Kalani, there are boundaries. Uh, if you have an interpersonal relationship, you know, you start dating somebody, there are going to be boundaries. And everything that you do, even in terms of working with the Course, let's say you start working with your thoughts about food, and nutrition, and diet, there's still boundaries in there. Uh, there's going to be boundaries already in place that the ego put there. And that's why you really have to become very intuitive with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the one that knows the way back to boundarylessness, you know, to this oneness. And that's why the letting go of those boundaries has to be guided. Uh, otherwise, there's just, there's a feeling of chaos, there's a feeling of terror, and then there's a sense of guilt. So, really when you say to somebody, um, you just violated one of my boundaries, it's more like, hmm, I have a boundary that I need to to look at with the Holy Spirit and say to the Holy Spirit, is this a boundary that is serving me at all? Uh, is this a boundary that's in place that, that I am not ready to remove? Or is this a boundary that I can safely give over to you and have you show me what's next? That's really a very helpful uh, way of going about it. It's when we try to think, oh, there must be, I'll, I'll read books by the experts the relationship experts, that, and oftentimes they're telling you to set boundaries, you know, and they don't have a bigger plan in mind. <laughs> they're just saying, this should be this way, you know, like, like those books with Dr. Spock on how to raise a child. You know, there's a lot of people that just read those books and thought Dr. Spock was the expert. And then at some point in working with their children, they went, uh-oh, this isn't working. How could Dr. Spock be wrong? He's like, a, like an expert. Or, you know, the experts. One time I was watching, I was just meditating and, and the Holy Spirit said, turn on the television. So I turned on the television and it was Oprah. And Oprah was having her religion show. Uh, she was going to go in and delve into the depths of religion on this, you know, this show. And so, she started talking, and then the audience got involved, and then it started to get really wild. I mean, the stage started to get really wild when everybody started expressing their religious beliefs. And Oprah was kind of saying, well, let's be tolerant here, let's, let's have an expression, let people express their beliefs. So people started very vociferously expressing their beliefs, and then they started, then they got talking about Jesus, and then at some point, uh, some lady stood up in the audience and said, Jesus Christ is the only way and the rest of you are all going to hell. And then the, st the stage started to shake. Uh, and Oprah got that.
that triggered Oprah. Oprah was really triggered by that, and she was like, that's just not true, and da 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 And the woman forcefully stood up, <coughs> forcefully, and it started to get really, really wild, and finally the stage, the cameras were even shaking. I thought, whoa, this is a pressure cooker. She really picked the topic to go into religion on national television, you know, syndicated around the world. And finally you could see the camera was even shaking, and finally Oprah said, Jesus, if you're there, help us. We need your help now. I've got to cut to a commercial break. <laughs> that, was the, that was the way she led into the commercial break. <laughs> Jesus, help us. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was kind of getting real wild. The cameras were shaking. So, of course, I was watching and I said, Well, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's an interesting show. So then they came back after the break and it was still shaking and it was still like the cold of the pot was really being stirred. Finally, Oprah reached that stage, though, of the show where she said, I have called in a panel of experts. Okay, now the panel of experts get their shot. So she had a panel of experts from all these different, they're all sitting up there in a row from different traditions, different religions, and they got into it. The experts got into it. They were screaming and shouting at each other. They were screaming back and forth and shouting with the audience. And it was a funny thing though, in the middle of the panel of experts, there was one guy who was just the happiest guy. He was so peaceful. He was just sitting there. He didn't say one word the whole show. He just, somebody from this side would talk and he would just... <laughs> somebody from this side would talk and he And somebody from the audience would talk. You know, he just was like, he was a total non-verbal. And I could see why the Holy Spirit had me turn it on. Because it was like, there was the peace. It was being taught and demonstrated, he just, he had this beautiful gaze of love and acceptance looking upon everyone. And in that sense, you know, that's a, a trained state of mind where you start to realize that all of the beliefs are false. And that only from a state of, of inclusiveness and inspired by love, which is really what forgiveness is, it's the gateway back to this sense of pure oneness. Uh, that which is real, this, this Buddha nature, this Christ nature, this essence of who we are and, and who God is, that the gateway is forgiveness and, and that can come in different forms, you know, the Holy Spirit or the higher self, the intuitive self, uses the symbols of the world that the ego made to take you to that. And literally will loosen the mind from these boundaries in a way that's helpful, in a way that doesn't promote like shame or guilt, you know, it, it actually washes away the stains of the guilt and the pain. So it, it just means that like if you're coming up with these boundary issues and you at some point in your life, you know, you you were told you don't have any boundaries, you're, you're really uh, an abnormal human being, uh, and then you reacted by taking on boundaries and say, well there's books and experts that say you, should, you need to have healthy boundaries. I had the same feeling where when I first saw the two words side by side, healthy and boundaries, yeah, 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 I just yeah. went, isn't that an oxymoron or isn't that in a contradiction of terms? And it was the same thing where I remember one Course in Miracles teacher years ago, he said uh, that you, you had to develop a healthy ego first before you let it go. And I was like, healthy ego? Is he reading the same book that I'm reading? You know, in the Course, Jesus says, the ego wants you dead. The ego will pursue you beyond the grave. How are you going to make a healthy ego if it wants to pursue you beyond the grave? You know, if it's this death wish, this dark death wish.